Hey guys, welcome to another episode of The Completionist. I'm back for my uh, summer round of videos, guys. Uh, I'm sure as many of you are aware, you know, I can't make videos that often because of the fact I work away from home. Uh, and, you know, I can only make videos twice a year, which is around around the, uh, the summertime and then when I come home over the, uh, over the Christmas holidays. So anyway, guys, uh, for the first video I wanted to do uh, now that I'm back uh, for a couple of weeks over the summer is uh, especially for a lot of my friends who have been subscribed to my channel for a really long time. Uh, you're very well aware of uh, what my uh, video game collection goals are. But uh, if anybody's new to the channel, uh, basically when I started collecting video games, uh, you know, like the aspect of collecting every game for a specific system never really appealed to me. You know, I always grew up loving and appreciating uh, anime style games, uh, regardless if they're fighting games, RPGs, platformers, or anything along those lines. So uh, the collection goal that I wanted to issue uh, for myself was that uh, I wanted to collect every anime style game that was lucky enough to have a North American uh, uh, release. Uh, technically it was supposed to be for every major console and handheld system, but the more I started collecting video games, uh, uh, I realized that it was going to be harder and harder to collect video games, especially for the older consoles, you know, like the NES, SNES, uh, Genesis, and the Master System, and especially nowadays, you know, s some of the high demand games for those systems can be really expensive. So I decided to cut back my uh, collecting goals a bit, and uh, I decided to still keep the North American uh, anime style game goal intact. But I decided to keep it for mostly disc-based systems, except, uh, except systems uh, such as the N64 or you know, the Sega 32X or, uh, or the GBA, because at least with those systems, you know, some of the games are still relatively half-decent price. You, you, you know, they haven't hit the crazy prices you know, like, uh, like the old 8 to 16-bit systems are. So uh, uh, now that I'm recording this video, uh, I have actually finished my uh, North American anime style collecting goal for three systems so far. And those systems were for the Sega Saturn, uh, the Panasonic 3DO, and the uh, Sega CD. And for today, guys, I have now finished my North American anime style game collection for my fourth system. And that fourth system is the Sega Dreamcast. Now guys, the, uh, the Sega Dreamcast uh, got released uh, in North America in uh, September 9th, 1999. And unfortunately, this was another system that I never had a chance to play. Uh, not at all. Um, the system, as I said before, came out in 1999, and at 1999 I was, go I was pretty much a broke-ass college student uh, in, in my second year of university, and I couldn't really afford to buy a system or, you know, uh, any new games for, for myself. At the time of uh, when the Dreamcast was released, you know, I was still... Uh, I was still playing PlayStation 1 games at the time, and, you know, even at that time, my PlayStation 1 collection was very minuscule. I think I might have only ever had two to three games for it. So with regards to my history uh, with the Sega Dreamcast, uh, it's actually very uh, limited. Um, you know, I, um, I did have a chance to play the Sega Dreamcast. You know, some, some of my friends had one. So, you know, I got to play some of the uh, fighting games on that system, you know, like Marvel vs. Capcom 2, Project Justice, and, the, uh, and Power Stone as well, and I really enjoy those games. But uh, I didn't uh, buy my Sega Dreamcast until, uh, until at around 2004, 2005. And uh, now, thankfully, the video game collecting craze uh, uh, wasn't really in high demand at that time. And uh, the first game that I ever bought for the, for the Sega Dreamcast at that time was, uh, was Skies of Arcadia. Uh, thankfully, you know, uh, finding uh, Sega Dreamcast games, you know, in my home province of Newfoundland uh, 
uh, was actually uh, pretty easy. But you know, at that time that that I did finally buy the Sega Dreamcast for the first time, it was still really hard, you know, to find quality games for it. But but I could still find a few half decent titles. But uh, I still have not ever completed one game for that system. Um, with Skies of Arcadia, I uh, I managed to get very far in it, but by the time you know uh, I was ready to beat the game, that's when I had to move away to work, and I haven't really touched the system uh, ever since. So anyway, guys, uh, in front of me, uh, you see a total of uh, 54 anime style games plus one extra that, that I'll get into uh, at the end of this video. So, for anyone that's not aware, what is my definition of an anime style game? Well, an anime style game, from my definition, is a video game that either uses Japanese anime style artwork or uses anime style cutscenes. And uh, these are technically the games I tend to enjoy the most. And through my research, you know, I discovered there were a total of uh, 54 games uh, for, the, uh, for the Sega Dreamcast. So, uh, now, this is, the part of video, uh, this is the part of the video that I want to address to somebody directly. Uh, one of the biggest Dreamcast collectors that I know on YouTube, uh, he was a guy I have shouted out in one of my videos before, and that guy is uh, Playongo. Now, as far as I know, Playongo has a complete North American Dreamcast collection. He has every title for that game, uh, for that system, that was ever released in North America. So, I'm addressing this to Playongo directly. Playongo, if you see an anime style game that is not included in these 54 games that, that I'm about to show everybody, I want you to get a hold of me because because as far as I would like to think, my collecting days for the Dreamcast are finished. So if you see a game missing out of, the, out of my personal um, uh, collection, I would greatly appreciate it if you would let me know. So anyway guys, the purpose of these videos is to not only show you all the games that I collect for a specific system, but it, it's to also help other video game uh, collectors who love anime style games as much as I do. And at least one of the good things about the Sega Dreamcast is that a lot of the Sega Dreamcast games haven't really hit ridiculous prices. Uh, you know, as far as I know, there's only really one game that goes around the $200 mark. You, uh, you know, even the most high demand Sega Dreamcast games you know, maybe average between $60 to, to $120. So at least, you know, the, the, the prices are half decent for the most part. It's not like some really high demand games, you know, for, uh, for the NES and the SNES that are demanding like four, five, six hundred dollars $600. So anyway, guys, let me get started and show you what all the anime style games are for the, uh, for the Sega Dreamcast. So we're going to start on my right. And we'll start with the games that got released first because with the Sega Dreamcast library, as far as I know, I think it was the white label games that actually got released first and then later on in Dreamcast's lifespan they actually uh, changed the design of the cases and instead of everything being white label, it's all black label now. So anyway guys, the uh, first game is Elemental Gimmick Gear. or it's called Egg, as well. Uh, the next game is the uh, first Evolution game, Evolution, The World of the Sacred Device. The next game is Dead or Alive 2, a very popular fighting game series. The next game, guys, is Virtual On Oratorio Tangram. The 
next game for the Sega Dreamcast guys is Plasma Sword, Nightmare of Bill Stein. And the next game we have, guys, is actually uh, my favorite game in this series, uh, even though I haven't played it on the Dreamcast. I've played it on the, uh, the PlayStation 1, and that's uh, Street Fighter Alpha 3. It has my favorite uh, Street Fighter character as well, which is Karen. So I've heard rumors that uh, Karen might be in Street Fighter 5. I sincerely hope she does, because that's one character that deserves to have a comeback in the Street Fighter universe. Uh, the next, the game is uh, Jojo's Bizarre Adventure. I have played this as well, but, but I've only ever played it for the uh, PlayStation. Very quirky game, but uh, really enjoyable. Next game we have, guys, is Psychic Force 2012. And the next game we have, guys, um, I don't know if I will be able to play this or not because it's an online multiplayer game and I don't think you can get online on the Sega Dreamcast anymore. And that's uh, Choo Choo Rocket. And the next game is a game I've seen in arcades plenty of times, but I've actually never played it before, and that's uh, Mr. Driller. That takes care of the first row, guys. So let me just move the chair over so I can put these up. Okay. All right, guys. The uh, the next game in this row. Uh, this is probably technically, you know, the rarest or the most high demand game. You know, a lot of video game collectors are after. I don't really like calling games rare or valuable because you know I buy games, actually fucking play them, not uh, not to treat them as status symbols. And that's the uh, Sonic Adventure, but it's the Sonic Adventure Limited Edition. And it actually has Limited Edition right there on the bottom. And it actually says the Limited Edition right there uh, on the side. As far as I know, I don't think there's much difference between the Limited Edition of Sonic Adventure and the actual, uh, and, and the common copy. I think somebody had mentioned to me that uh, the intro song is a little different, or the ending song uh, is a bit different, uh, but I'm not too sure. But, 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 you know, it was a limited edition of a, uh, of a game, so, you know, I just simply saved my money and actually purchased it. Next game is a game I played a ton in the arcades, haven't played the Dreamcast version, but as far as I know, this game really helped sell the uh, Dreamcast back in the day. And that's the original uh, Soul Calibur. Played this game a lot back in the arcade, but I've never ever had a chance to uh, to play the uh, play the Dreamcast uh, version of this game. Next game we have is uh, Evolution Two: Far Off Promise. Next game we have, guys, is uh, Time Stalkers. The next game we have, guys, is uh, Bust a Move Four. Always got a, a really big fondness for the for the Bust a Move series, even though I haven't played any of the newer entries in this uh, in this series. I've I played the original. Uh, Bust and Move game, but uh, never any of the uh, newer entries. Next game we have, guys, so uh, one of my favorite fighting franchises, and that's the King of Fighters Dream Match 1999. If it's one thing uh, the Sega Dreamcast is really known for, is that uh, compared to all the other systems that gave the Sega Dreamcast, you know, uh, competition, you know, such as, you know, the PS2 and the GameCube and the, uh, and the Xbox. Uh, I think the Sega Dreamcast probably did the best job of localizing uh, a lot of games for, for the shoot 'em up genre and uh, bring them over to the North American audience. And uh, one of those shoot 'em up games is uh, the original Giggling.
and we have another uh, Sega Dreamcast shoot 'em up. Uh, I've actually played this on MAME, but I haven't played played the Dreamcast version. And that's uh, Gunbird 2. And talking about the Sonic Adventure Limited Edition, this is the actual, uh, I guess, massively released version. You know, there's no limited edition here or here, so so this is just literally like the plain vanilla uh, copy of the uh, of the game. But like uh, from some of the Sonic fans I do know, uh, uh, this game is actually really enjoyable, and it also helped uh, sell the Sega Dreamcast when it was first released. And the next game we have, guys. Stuck to the table is we have Muckin X. Now I've had some friends that have actually played this and and they've actually really enjoyed this game. So so you can't really go along uh, go wrong with a uh, with a title that has both Sega and Atlas attached to it. So, that takes care of the next bunch of games, guys. Alright guys, next game we have, literally uh, one of the most fun fighting fan tr franchises I've ever had the pleasure, uh, pleasure of playing. Uh, I actually like, like the cartoon anime series of this as well, and this is the first entry of this series, and I would love to, uh, to see this series make a comeback, and that's the original Power Stone. Uh, I briefly played Power Stone on the Dreamcast, but I've also played the Power Stone collection on the... Uh, uh, on the PSP, and uh, this is just a really fun series. This is a like a great series to just have four people, two to four people play, and just have a really great time with it. But I think on the original Power Stone, you can only have two players. It's Power Stone Two; you can have four. Uh, next game we have, guys, a uh, quirky little game. I haven't seen much people talk about it, and that's. Uh, a uh, super magnetic neo. So I have no idea what or oh, what this game is about. I haven't really heard anybody uh, talk about this game either. Also, one other thing you know I wanted to mention about the Dreamcast as well is that the the Dreamcast has a very dedicated fan following. There are a lot of gamers that really love that system, and uh, there are still independent gaming companies r right now that still make games for for the Dreamcast. Because even though the Dreamcast was considered a failure and it was uh, Sega's last uh, console system, the biggest thing I do love about this uh, system is that this system had a lot of games that were never ported to other systems. And a lot of people have told me is that especially for the fighting game genre, a lot of the fighting games for the Sega Dreamcast were as close to a perfect arcade port as you can get and a lot of people love playing fighting games on the Sega Dreamcast because it's because to a lot of people it's probably the best way to play a lot of these fighting games and the reason why I mention that is because the next game we have in the list is uh, the first game in this critically acclaimed series that a lot of people love uh, I have played this game quite a lot but I've only ever played it for, for the PS1 and not the Dreamcast and that's the original uh, Marvel, Marvel vs. Capcom. Next game we have guys is another game I've never played before but a lot of people love this game and that is uh, Space Channel 5. Uh, I do like the rhythm game genre, and uh, I have heard people talk of this game uh, quite a lot. Um, so I can't wait to actually give this game a try. Another game comes from an anime series that a lot of people love. I still need to watch the anime series. A lot of people want me to watch the anime series because a lot of people know that I like my anime very bloody and very graphic and things along those lines. And the uh, the game that, that I have here is uh, Sword of the Berserk. So I've never played this before, I've never watched the an anime before, but hopefully those are two things I can change in the near future. Uh, 
Next game we have, guys, is uh, the third entry in another really great uh, funny game series, and that's uh, Virtua Fighter 3TB. This was probably one of my hardest games to find. Um, this is a, another high demand game and it is another fighting game. Um, it was actually hard to find this game uh, in relatively good, uh, good condition online. You know, uh, It was easy to find import copies of this game, but I actually had a hard time trying to find a North American version. And that's uh, Techromancer. This was actually one that one of the last couple of uh, Sega Dreamcast games I actually needed for uh, uh, for my collection. Uh, you know, you can't go wrong with a, with a fighting game that uses uh, huge giant robots. Since I'm a big fan of Xenogears. And... Next game we have, guys, um, another, another Sega Dreamcast fighting game. A lot of people consider it the best in the series. I played this for the PlayStation 2 and in the arcade. I've never played the Dreamcast version, but a lot of people love this game, and that's uh, Marvel vs. Capcom 2. Okay. Next game we have, guys, um, uh, yet another Sega Dreamcast fighting game. Uh, another series that people absolutely love but I've only ever played it briefly. Not on the Dreamcast, just at the arcade, but I would eventually love to play the series and actually start to learn s s some of the moves be because a lot, of, a, a lot of hardcore fighting game fans really love this series. And that's uh, Street Fighter III uh, Double Impact. And the next game we have, guys, is uh, Gundam Side Story 0079, uh, Rise from, uh, from the Ashes. Uh, this is another game I haven't heard a lot of people on YouTube talk about. Uh, I don't really know if it's any uh, good or not, but uh, it a game has to be really bad for, for, for me to really hate on it because I try to, I try to see the good in every game that, uh, that I play, but uh, this is a game I don't hear a lot of people talk about, so... So I can't wait to actually get I, I give this game a try. Okay, so that takes care of the white label games. So we're going to move on to the to the black label games. And obviously, this series has gained popularity again, especially for having last time I checked, you know, the most successful Kickstarter of all time. And uh, thankfully, I bought this game before before Shenmue started to. Uh, to get really popular, but uh, so I do have a copy of Shenmue, but thankfully I bought it, you know, before Shenmue 3 was announced, or uh, I bought this a couple of years ago, but uh, the biggest thing about this game is I actually got the limited edition. You know, there's actually two versions of this game. Uh, one, you won't see this limited edition logo right here, and uh, this actually comes with an extra CD. I think it, uh, it includes the original soundtrack, music inspired by Yu Suzuki. So, a lot of people really swear by this game, a lot of people really love it. Um, I remember reading a lot of video game magazines about it, but the fact that, you know, I've only ever played maybe a couple of Dreamcast games, I still haven't got around to playing this. But, you know, since a lot of people love this game so much, you know, I can't wait to, to, to give this game a try. And despite the game being fairly old, I'm sure I will enjoy this game just as much as uh, when it was uh, first released. Next game we have, guys, is uh, King of Fighters Evolution. If another entry in a really excellent King of Fighters series. That series need, needs a lot more love. And another excellent addition to the series, as far as I know. Next game we have, guys, is another high-demand game. A lot of video game collectors are after it. Some people consider it one of the the more like rare uh, titles to, to try to find for uh, for a Dreamcast. It's a, uh, I guess, technically a run and gun, but there are some shoot 'em up elements to it as well, and that's uh, Cannon Spike. 
I was lucky enough to find this at uh, Pink Gorilla when I went there uh, for PAX Prime uh, back a couple years ago. Next game we have, guys, another Sega Dreamcast uh, shoot 'em up, which is great. You know, the more shoot 'em ups that get released for a North American market, the better. And that's the uh, sequel to Giga Wing, Giga Wing 2. Uh, when I did my road trip with Charge Back Forward back in the day, uh, this was one of the games I actually uh, picked up, and another uh, Sega Dreamcast uh, 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 fighting game. Very high demand, you know, on uh, for for a lot of video game collectors, but a really good fighter from what a lot of people tell me, and that's uh, Fatal Fury: uh, Market of Wolves. And this is another game that I uh, that I picked uh, when I went uh, to Seattle with uh, with Charge Back Forward, and another Sega Dreamcast shoot 'em up. Um, I've heard mixed feelings about it. You know, there are some people that really love this game, and there are other people that don't like this game. But the but but the game is uh, Mars Matrix. A game I can't wait to play. Um, I love this series. Um, this series is frustrating, it's hard, but I absolutely love it. But strangely enough, from what a lot of people told me, is that this is actually the easiest game in the series from the games in the series that were lucky to be released in North America. And that's uh, Bangayo for the, uh, for the Sega Dreamcast. Uh, I can't wait to play this. Um, I love the Bangayo series just for how difficult it is, how frustrating it is, how thrower controller inducing it is, but I don't think this game will give me as much frustration as uh, Bangayo Spirits or Bangayo uh, HD Missile Fury, but I still love this series, and this series doesn't get enough love, and I sincerely hope it does. But like some of the other earlier games I showed, this is a very high demand uh, Sega Dreamcast title. You know, a lot of people want this game. I just hope if, if people do pick up this game, you know, they do play it because it is a very enjoyable series and, and it deserves to be played. So guys, we have another, uh, another Dreamcast fighter. Uh, basically, the best in this series of games, um, but still another game I've never ha had the pleasure of playing, and that's uh, Street Fighter III Third Strike. Okay, two more rows left to go, guys. Okay, for any of you guys that have been a part of my channel for a long time, what's my favorite fighting game? Rival Schools. Always will be. I got another good fighting game will will change that, but you never know. So the fact that I love Rival School so much, this is probably one of the highest demand, massively produced Dreamcast games. Everybody wants it. Uh, it's just such a more fleshed out uh, version of the original Rival Schools game. It's it's just unfortunate that it only got got a Dreamcast release. But this game is jam packed with so many characters, so so much so much extra content, and it really deserves to be played. And that's uh, Project Justice for the uh, for, for the Sega Dreamcast. This game I have played a lot, uh, not necessarily this copy, but I played uh, you know my friends' copies. You know when this game was first released, and I just absolutely love and adore this series. Next game we have, guys, um, I think this is a uh, fighting game. Yeah, it is a fighting game. Um, you know, I haven't seen a lot of people talk about this game either, but uh, like I said, it's anime style, so I had to pick it up, and that's the uh, Last Blade 2. Let's say Heart of the Samurai. Next game we have, guys, um, I don't know, like, uh, 
some people may consider this anime style, other people may not, but, you know, I looked at some gameplay footage of it, and, you know, I think it qualified enough for, for me to consider it an anime style game. And that's uh, Death Crimson OX. Probably the most important JRPG to probably pick up uh, for the uh, for the Sega Dreamcast, and uh, it comes from a series that I haven't played that often. I've I've only ever played and completed the third game in the series, but a lot of people have really great things to say, especially for for the first two entries in the series. And the game that I have is uh, Grandia Two. I think from what people told me, I think this is the best version of the game. I think it got released on the PlayStation 2 as well, but like a lot of, uh, a lot of people have told me that uh, this version is the uh, definitive version for the North American market. Next game we have, guys, um, basically a sequel to an awesome uh, fighting game. Basically, they took this fighting game and just made it that much better. But it is still a very high-demand Sega Dreamcast title that a lot of people are after. And that's uh, Power Stone 2. And this one, you can play with, uh, with four characters. And it is just a ton of fun. It's an excellent party game. Uh, you know, if you have a bunch of friends over, you know, this is a game that, that, that needs to be, uh, be played. It's just... Really fun, really hilarious, and deserves to be played by everybody. Okay. Next game we have, guys, uh, one of, not necessarily my favorite anime, but an anime I remember very fondly uh, back in my early days of actually enjoying anime. Uh, when this game was first released, I didn't even know that it was released. I didn't even know it was based on this anime. Uh, I haven't seen a lot of people talk about it, um, so I don't know what the gameplay for, uh, for this game is like. But the fact that I do love this anime a lot, especially the first series, not necessarily the, the second series, uh, you know, I definitely was going to add this game to my collection, and that's uh, Record of Lotus War. If you haven't watched the, uh, the U.S. Manga Corps uh, uh, Record of Lotus War, I think it's only like... Um, 12 episodes or something like that, really worth watching. It's really good. Next game we have, guys, a game everybody loves for, for Dreamcast as far as I know, but still yet another game I have never played before. Seen plenty of gameplay on it, a lot of people do reviews on it, a lot of people love this game, but still it's a game I have never played before, and that's uh, Jet Grind Radio. Next game we have, guys, is uh, another Sonic game, uh, a game a lot of people love, as, as far as I know, and that's uh, Sonic Adventure 2. Okay, and now, the last row of games, and my apologies, guys, for this video uh, running really long, but that's what happens when you finish a game. Uh, game collection and the collections over over 50 50 games next game we have is uh, Sonic Shuffle uh, from from what I know of this game it's uh, it's basically like Mario Party I guess but you know with Sonic characters so haven't really heard a lot of gamers talk uh, talk about this game either so I don't know what what it's like uh, next game, um, I don't know if I can play uh, play this game as well because uh, they say it's an online online based game, but I would like to think there is a uh, there is a single player mode on it. At least I hope so, and that's uh, Bomberland Bomberman Online. Tongue twister. Okay, next game we have guys, first Dreamcast game I ever bought. It's still the, the original copy I bought back around 2004, 2005. I still need to play and complete this. And that's uh, Skies of Arcadia. Um, a lot of people uh, think Skies of Arcadia is better than Grandia 2. Some other people feel vice versa. But those are probably 
this is probably one of, one of the best JRPGs you'll ever play on that system, even though that system doesn't really have a, um, a huge library of, uh, of JRPGs. But technically, this copy of the game, I can't complete it. Because you need to be online to collect uh, some of the items in this game. So when I do get around to completing this game, uh, I'll try to get everything I can that doesn't really require you to be online. But, but you know, at least for, uh, for the completionist in me, you know, I do have Skies of Arcadia Legends for the, for the GameCube. So at least when I play that game, I can actually uh, collect everything in that game. Next game we have, guys, uh, it was a game I was unsure of, uh, if it was anime style or not, but I, but I talked to some of my friends about it, I talked, uh, and uh, some of my friends convinced me to consider this an anime style game, and that's uh, Charge and Blast. Okay. Next game I have, guys, I don't know if I can play this. Um, I still wanted to add it to the collection because technically I do consider it an anime style game, but I don't know much about it. I'm sure a lot of people played this back in the, back in the day when it was first released, so I don't know what I can play with this. Uh, you know, I don't know if there's a single player mode or like anything along those lines, and that's uh, Fantasy Star Online version 2. Um, I don't know. I don't know it if, if I can play this or not, but, you know, even if I can't, it's still an anime style game, you know, I wanted to, to add to the collection, you know, ju just to say that my collecting days for, for the Dreamcast are over. Uh, next game we have, guys, is uh, Outrigger. I think that's how you pronounce it. This was the last game I had to... Uh, to add to to my Sega Dreamcast collection. Um, when I first went through it, I kind of immediately passed it off as a North American survival horror game, but then uh, when I was trying to get, uh, get this collection ready and one of my friends was going th through my game list, he let me know that, uh, that I missed this game, so this was the last game I purchased in order to finish this collection, and that's uh, Ill Bleed. And last game is uh, the uh, is another uh, version, or I guess uh, art variant of uh, Fantasy Star Online, which is kind of funny. This one says version two, and this one says version two as well. But as far as I know, I think this was the first release, and I think this was the second release. So I don't know if it's a Frankenstein game that they just, you know, took different art variants or like anything along those lines. You know, if somebody could could help me with that, I'd greatly appreciate it. But but just just like the other one, um, uh, I don't I don't know if I can play these. I don't know if there's a single player campaign or if I really do need to be online to play this. If I did, then I completely missed out on it. It's kind of funny. Both front. Uh, art variants are different, but the backs are completely the same, so... Like I said, I don't know if they're Frankenstein games or anything along those lines. Well, what I mean by Frankenstein game is that they just took bits and pieces of parts of different games and just, uh, and just put it inside. You know, you know, I wonder if the discs are, are the same. Yep, discs are the same, but... But the back of the manuals are different as well. One, one has it in French with more information about Fantasy Star, and the other one has an ad for Sonic Adventure 2, so I don't know what's up with that. Now, the last game I have here, guys, uh, it's another copy of uh, Sonic Adventure. But uh, this one kind of has a story attached to it. When I was on the hunt for uh, Sonic Adventure, uh, you know, uh, basically I have a game dealer that, you know, basically I give him a list of games, he finds the games for me, tells me what the price are, I pay him, I, um, and like I also give him a courtesy finder's fee because 
he has a knack of finding a lot of stuff I'm looking for, you know, through various means, you know, besides eBay and things along those lines. So uh, I asked him to buy me a copy of Sonic Adventure, but I actually came across a copy of Sonic Adventure in a game store I went to. So I, I decided to buy it just because, you know, any opportunity, you know, to finish, uh, to put another anime style game uh, um, um, on the collection and, and get it finished you know, I'm, I'm going to take, take advantage of it. So, I bought the copy of Sonic Adventure at the store. Uh, that's the first one I, I showed you just, just then. And my friend had, uh, and my game dealer had, had ordered this copy. But, uh, you know, technically, uh, like, the, the original Sonic Adventure is not that expensive of a, of a game. You can usually get it anywhere between 5 to $20. But the strange thing about this one is that I don't think the person that sold it to my game dealer really knew what he had. Because even though it says Sonic Adventure on the front and Sonic Adventure on the side, when I open up the disc, it was actually the Sonic Adventure Limited Edition disc. That's absolutely crazy. This is this disc alone, you know, you can usually range anywhere from like sixty to uh, to a hundred bucks, and I don't even think the seller that the uh, that sold it to uh, to my game dealer even realized of what he had. So the thing is, guys, is uh, technically this is a game I don't need. You know, I already have the Sonic Adventure Limited Edition disc manual case things along those lines. Now, before everybody gets their hopes up and uh, and thinks that you know th this is up for grabs. Uh, technically, uh, this was promised to uh, McFly. Um, I basically put up a post in my game group and asked you know if anybody was interested in this, and, and McFly had uh, had said he was interested in owning this. Uh, you know, I'm not looking for a lot for it. Uh, the fact that I do have my Dreamcast collection finished. Uh, the next system that I'm actually going to work on is the GameCube. So I still need to. Uh, send him my GameCube list of games I'm looking for, but, uh, but tentatively, tentatively this, uh, this game is going to uh, go to him. So I just wanted to, to, to share that story because, you know, it's not very often, I guess, uh, uh, you run into a situation like that. You, you accidentally uh, get, a, get a rare game completely by, uh, by accident expecting something else. So, so anyway, guys, to end the video, same way I always end these uh, uh, these game collection completion videos. So, time for you guys to guess. I have three Dreamcast games that uh, I can't wait to play. When I get home on a more full time basis, I'll actually be able to start dedicating more time, you know, to get to to get my games completed for for the systems that I have my game collections fi finished for. So anyway, guys, the uh, the three games that I'm very excited to play first is the original Bangayo. Whoops. <laughs> Cannon Spike and Project Justice. Let's see if I can get get in the stand. So anyway, guys, out of these three games, which game do you think I'm the most excited to play and get completed first? I'll just give you a few seconds. Uh, while you're guessing, I'm actually rocking the shades today. Now, it, for anyone who's new to the channel, well, you know, why do you wear, you know, sunglasses inside? Well, uh, I've been wearing glasses ever since I was like 11, 12 years old, and my eyes are technically super sensitive to light. Um, sometimes I'll wake up in the morning and my eyes will be completely bloodshot. So, so I literally uh, wear my shades about 50% uh, of the time. And that's why in like some of the videos, you, you know, it could be nighttime or, you know, it could be in the house, but, uh, but I still have to wear my shades just because my eyes are very super sensitive to light. So I'm sure after that time, guys, you made your choice. So not Cannon Spike. Not one of the most high demand Dreamcast titles that a lot of collectors are after. Between these two games, it is so hard because they're both game series that I absolutely love to death. Rival Schools, favorite fighting game series of all time. Bangayo, one of my favorite uh, uh, shoot em up game series of all time. But 
I have to go with the sequel to the fighting game I love the most, which is Project Justice. Um, I just love this game. Um, I still think the original Rival Schools game is better, but I can't wait to actually start dedicating some free time to actually getting, getting this game completed. And I think it is my favorite fighting game series. I think it's a highly underrated fighting game series. I think a lot of people should play it. It really is enjoyable. It's just too bad that, you know, it is one of the more expensive Dreamcast games. You, you, know, you, you know, if you're going to go after a copy, uh, I sincerely hope you can find it cheap because most copies of the game will usually go anywhere from $80 to $240. But, you know, if you save your money, and trust me, it's it's worth it. You'll you'll get a lot of game uh, gameplay out of this game. So anyway, guys, that takes care of another episode of the Completionist, and I have officially completed my North American anime style Sega Dreamcast collection. Unless Playongo tells me a game that I missed out on when when uh, when I finished collecting for this system. So anyway, guys, as always, take care. And I wish you nothing but the best. Later.